right, so welcome everybody who's already here to the fourth webinar of the International Youth Work Trainer Guild on assessment practices in the training field in the frame of a key action two that we're actually implementing called AppRaiser, where we want to develop um, a digital solution, a digital environment for the appraisal of trainer competences based on the ETS competence framework. And as part of this project, we organize webinars uh, honestly, out of a very egoistic concern, we want to learn from experts and hear different opinions. And since we also believe in, in sharing and collaboration, we make this in a public way so more people can, can join. Today we have Rita with us from Salto. Thank you so much, Rita, for joining us. And uh, I will hand over to you in a, in a second. Just some technicalities first, maybe, that, as I explained before, but maybe some more people joined, that uh, you have a chat window that you can activate in the bottom of your screen where you can send private or collective messages. We would also use this chat window to collect questions from you. We will have a first block by Rita and then a little break for questions and then the second block and possibility for questions. So we collect them through the, through the chat window. Also, in the very beginning of the chat window, you find a link to collective notes on Etherpad that we are taking. Thank you, Mika and Jan, for taking the notes, and anyone can contribute. Also, we will record this whole webinar and make it available on the blog of the Guild. Plus, tonight, uh, our graphic recorder from Lithuania, Agne Rapalaite, thank you, Agne, will make a visualization also of this webinar, and we will also publish it on the blog. So that's it for now from my side, and I'm really looking forward to this webinar with Rita, who was very active in preparation. Thank you for this, Rita. It was a very, very pleasant process to prepare this with you and see your draft and everything. Mm -hmm. So, floor to you, dear Rita. Yes, thank you. Okay, so here we go. So, hello, everybody. So, uh, I see you, Markus. Is this correct? Yes, I, I can even unmute mute my... Oh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> It's fine. I just <laughs> was not uh, sure if this is correct. It was different before. So people, this is for me a very new thing, as you can see. So I'm a very excited uh, woman at the moment, but uh, your presence and your energy, uh, which is with us now here in the universe, will help me to go through this webinar. My name is, for the ones who never met me, my name is Rita Bergstein. I'm working in Salto Training and Operation. This year, already for 13 years, I started in uh, 2005 with the development of USPASS. Uh, and now I'm focusing on recognition of non-formal learning and youth work, but also on training and education of youth workers and trainers uh, in, in various ways. This is our mission here in Salto Training and Cooperation. From my previous life, I take experience um, as having been a trainer as well um, in the European context uh, for, let's say, five, six, seven years, more intensive than nowadays. And nowadays when I train, I do it, of course, I have always a different role and a different head with me. So um, I speak from experience, but of course, forgive me, more experience is with you. So what I will talk about today is, or was I, what I was invited um, to talk about is about self-assessment and how we tackle it here in Salto Training and Cooperation. What is our experience and what we would recommend the Appraiser project to do so. And uh, I have uh, like six areas I would like to talk about. And these are the areas, so I will show you. And I'm really sorry, we have to start from USPASS. Some of you find, might find it boring, but this is where for us the story begins with self-assessment, so I have to go back. After USPASS, we started to develop the ETS competence models. Here, this one for trainers working at international level. I will talk a bit about experience and reactions on this uh, competence model. Then I will talk about what do we uh, assume is happening with self-assessment based on the competence models and based on activities that we support or that are happening in Erasmus+. Self-assessment, we have the highest experience at the moment also in application procedures, which are very interesting for trainers, I guess. And at the end, of course, I will give some recommendations from what I see in the appraiser project, what is going on at the moment, in the field. So now let's start with um, our experience 
youth pass. Um, I mean, <clears throat> I hope that all of you who are present there uh, on your screen know youth pass. You have implemented youth pass, but uh, we were involved in the conceptualizing youth pass at the beginning. And as you know, a strong self-assessment part is um, an element of the youth pass process. And I would like to give you some ideas why did we initiate it um, back in 2005 when we start conceptualizing. We were asked just to produce a piece of paper that documents that people took part. But for us, it was very clear that learning that happens in international mobility is nothing without the real experience of people and the learning experience. But what to do with this and how to stimulate this experience. Um, it immediately came into, for us, the competence focus. Um, so looking on um, skills, knowledge, and attitudes that people develop in project, because that was already with the lifelong learning strategy of the commission in the air. So we took the competence development of participants, but this happens by learning processes. And here we are where we need to go. Learning processes, okay. We think in international activities, learning processes are happening. How do we best document and how do we best describe them? Um, like you all, like we have all, we have assessment processes in mind when we think about formal learning. <clears throat> Looking back into our school career and our high school careers, whatever where this were assessment processes were mainly by somebody from outside giving us marks. We have positive, we have negative experiences. Um, but it was clear that in youth work, another approach would be needed and we turned it around and also here the Life and Learning Strategy gave us the idea looking on the individual. And reflection was already a term which existed in the youth field, reflecting on experiences, reflecting on learning processes came together. So, um, but we wanted to give also the word to the young people themselves so that they would be enabled to describe their learning. <clears throat> and that is also strongly connected here to the certificates uh, that are provided with use pass because we wanted uh, young people to understand what is written there, not to be not able to, to, tell, to talk about and to tell what happened within them, how did they develop, which is a strong uh, part of assessing yourself, being able to describe yourself. Knowing back that days, but I think it's, it's still the same today, the practice in the youth field, so the practice with an organization, a youth project, an international, national um, youth, youth work is very dif different in terms of knowledge of people, in terms of education of youth workers, in terms of creativity. But it was also very clear and that we should keep in mind that um, the learning process is one dimension of the project, but there's always another dimension, which is the content dimension of any activity. So the question was always how do we link the learning aspect with topics in an activity so that that learning is, becomes not an, um, yeah, the focus itself, but it is connected to what is going on in the project itself. It was also clear from the beginning investment in terms of training and guidance is needed and therefore we had to decide also that youth workers and trainers who work with young people um, should be stimulated to use self-assessment in activities to develop the youth path themselves. Yeah, and that was something that we started with. So this is simply describing what happened within youth path, but it is important for us where self-assessment started and then Project by project started to implement it. Youth workers, trainers got in touch with it. They were trained in activities. Um, and uh, when in 2012, 2013, we worked on the youth, um, youth pass impact study, we at least we received the, pro uh, the proof that um, the decisions which were taken to focus on the learning process and also to invest in, in youth workers um, was very much valued by the field. To be honest, I was surprised that it was such, was such a high value of it. Um, I was ex not expecting this because we received quite a criticism. What we are doing there, is it too much focus on the individual? Does it change youth work, etc., etc., to focus so much on learning? And for a lot of organizations at that time, learning was not in the core. Learning was connected to formal context. Okay, then we started to develop the competence model 
in our second strategy context, which is the competence model for trainers uh, working at international level. And we started to look on trainers and not on youth workers first, just for, for your information, because trainers are not a protected profession in countries. So we were not in conflict from the beginning with other occupational profiles which exist. So we could take the freedom and trainers, the youth trainers, especially the very unique um, group of uh, professionals. So we took the freedom and liberty in our fields to start to develop this, this uh, competence model. Um, again, here we started to, we, we continued to focus on the individual. Um, when being asked of why did we focus on the individual coming from youth class, coming from this experience that we had, it was very clear for us to continue focusing on the people because reflection, learning process development is connected to individuals. Of course, systems and organizations have to follow, but we wanted to, to continue with our road to focus on, on individual context and then draw conclusions for the systems which are inside. <clears throat> so for us, with the competence model, of course, it was a lot of work to build the different competence areas, to work on the knowledge, skills and attitudes, that it makes sense, that it's coherent, not doubling, etc., etc. You can imagine all this work. From the beginning, it's, I think we implied self-assessment as integral part, because on how to use this, of course, self-assessment is obvious as a next step. But we didn't start thinking from what type of methods would we offer. Uh, and therefore, our first offers are like Excel sheets where people have to access themselves numbers or tick boxes where you can say yes, I have this or yes, no. So it was a very basic form of, of self-assessment. And since we send it out to the world, we know that organizations and trainers using it are a bit more creative than we have stimulated the process so far. So there is experience. <clears throat> In terms of um, self-assessment itself, what, what was our intention at, at that time, we knew or, or we got this as a feedback that there are trainers who regularly um, practice self-assessment in various ways because they came from a field or they came from a practice, they came from an educational background and training, which implied self-assessment as a continuous process. But it was also very clear what we could see that there are trainers with no or very little experience in self-assessment for themselves or when training, training others. Okay, um, and then um, for us it was also clear with this, this use plus experience in the background, um, self-assessment is a part of a development process. So it's not, um, it, it's not a one point situation that assessment either looks back to a certain period in life and reflect on this um, period or it is a continuous process like in training courses where you plan a self-assessment you follow yourself over over a certain period and observing yourself um, yeah and uh, then um, that it was very clear that stimulation for individuals teams and for training context would be very needed so if we work with such a model, if we motivate to self-assess, to use it, it's, it's really needed to trigger this, to give reasons to people, to invite. It also needs communication to be understood. But, and this was our biggest interest, we strongly believe that it offers a great tool or a great opportunity for recognition so that trainers are able to describe what their work is about. Also in detail, sometimes it gives you interest and impressions it provides uh, recognition possibilities for occupational frameworks so for contexts where trainers or also use work because some people take it and translate it just to other contexts to develop occupational standards uh, or to develop systems in training. So this is the this is the, the interest and that is the let's say the history a bit of uh, how we work with it. And before we go to experience, I think Marcus, you wanted to take a while for questions. Yeah, now would be a first break for questions. If you have any, maybe just don't write the whole question in the chat window. Just say, I have a question and I unmute the mic. Ah, here somebody raised the hand. Okay, we can do it like this very well. Good. So.
Yep, here we go. Snish, no, it's not unmuted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so, non surprisingly, I think for most of the people here who are part of the appraiser, but also the others, hello, and, and Reed as well, I think I'm quite curious. Um, I have start my video. <clears throat> I'm actually quite curious. Um, what were the so when you uh, talked about self assessment and thought about integrating self assessment and so on, what were the basis for it? So, what were some of the considerations around uh, self assessment? Maybe some research that you have done or something where you collected the ideas and so on. So, what was this process behind? Maybe a little bit. I hope that's clear. Okay, thanks, Nej. To ask for the why and why did we decide for it. I was chatting a bit with uh, Marcus already about it before, so because uh, I got this question before and I can, I, I'm really sorry to say that um, we didn't research into anything. It came just as a natural process that we integrate the focus on the person. And if the person describes him or herself, yeah, maybe we started to use this wording before, so from a much easier wording. And the word self-assessment came as a term uh, just in it, huh? because uh, we, didn't, uh, we didn't do any research on this. Uh, we didn't decide consciously this is the term we use. It entered uh, our context and then we continued by using it because it needed a name. It was not self-reflection, maybe what we do. I think we used at the beginning self-reflection and it was a bit in terms of reflection a bit too misleading so it went into self-assessment but today I also dealt a bit with the word appraisal to see what is, does appraisal mean and there I thought oh maybe we should have done a bit of an etymological process before because appraisal seems to be the better word than assessment but okay that's another, that's another story but sorry Snejana no clever answer for you I did a bit of speculation and I will do it openly here now. I think it comes a lot from, from of course, from the business world where assessment, self-assessment, assessment centers at the time were the fashion to use the word. I'm not talking about the process. But I think from the process itself, so to inner reflections, I think in development psychology we will find it, but I was opening also the floor for because where I know it from is from confessional use work. And I wonder if not also in confessional context or in religious context, you would find, um, or in spiritual context, you find roots for why looking on self-reflection, self-assessment, etc. Et Thank you. Any other questions at this point? So if not, we go on. We have lots of material still. Okay. Okay, let's go on, exactly. Yeah, okay. I go on? Thank you, Thank you. yes. Okay, uh, I will continue with experience and reactions. This is more when we started to present the model and promoted the model and the self-assessment, which was uh, stimulated, but you could, we could see from the reactions that trainers had where we presented it immediately, the shock, is this a must-have list or is this, do I have to develop now all these competences, all these, um, Things. Is it a desired wish list? Is it a list of uh, goals that I have to reach to become the super trainer? All things, how people react. We had uh, questions on do different personalities react differently on competence lists in this context um, uh, of, uh, for example, are people intimidated by looking at such a list or are people very easy in taking, oh, I can do this, I can do okay, this, I can do that. So this question of, yeah, what personalities can cope exactly with lists like this. Um, people who really reacted very overwhelmed, but a lot of feedback we got when you start reading it, when you go into the competence model as such, it's easy to understand at the same time. Of course, there are terminologies in this, there are conceptual language which is used, but uh, we also expect from the trainers a certain level of theoretical reflection that they are capable and although they might not need the terminology that they have the capacity to deal with it. In a lot of cases this wakes interest for more. It definitely needs much more practical and strategic ways or strategic discussion of how to use it also, but this is exactly the project that you do and that was, was also in the terms of the feedback. Okay, the next, uh, that was just a very brief thing. What we assume is happening now with self-assessment whenever the, the self-assessment is 
used or is used for the purpose of it. What we ask for, for sure, and we hope that also in the field this is happening, why should I self-assess? So the question, what for is this? But this I tackled already a bit. So do I use it in a specific moment? For example, I would like to apply for a next job or for a next career step. I apply for a specific training course. So I need, I have a reason for self-assessment. Um, and or do I do it in a long-term process because I want to develop or I found something in myself which I want to explore and I use self-assessment um, to go deeper in it and the competence framework or uh, competence model provides super context. We get the feedback like with everything else it is very hard to put in words now because we invite people to say look on the situations that happens to you look into emotions a context where you have explored something or observe yourself, ask others to observe. And when formulating self-assessment um, in words, really not only because we have worked with tables also where we invite people to describe it themselves um, away from the, from the competence model and such, it's really hard to put in words. Um, be it, uh, I don't use a language which is my native language, that's, that's one area of course, but then also, um, there is a limitation or limited capacity of people on describing themselves in words and maybe you can never cover yourself. But then of course, uh, and that you know, we know all from, from training settings where we are, ask people to reflect is about painting, taking a photo story of a situation. But again, this all of this leaves space for interpretation. That's very clear. So it's really hard to put in words yourself. So, but, but when you com start communicating it outside, that's, that's, um, that's this side. Yeah, and then the question is also um, that um, we assume uh, that self-assessment should not stand on its own because I might uh, find myself in a situation, I have this feeling, I have an emotional situation, I can analyze, can step back, etc. But it's... Um, um, but it's the question also, do you have a critical friend where you talk, whom you can ask to give you a feedback, can it be a follow trainer? So we hope that people start using it not only individually, but also use others to get, to get feedback. Um, yeah, and um, what we assume, what is also happening, we motivate that it also been used in international teams, but we hardly think that there's time enough. So yes, we try to motivate it, but it needs time. It needs first time that you reserve for yourself to self-assess, um, but then also to get in touch with international colleagues who might be your fellow contact, because I might train differently in a national context than in an international one. So it's needed that I talk about it also in an inter international team. Yeah, that uh, this, this is what we think, what is happening with self-assessment. I think I touched everything. I go now to a very specific context because we have uh, asked for and, and worked with this um, with self-assessment also in application procedures in the Erasmus Plus um, is an action context. Maybe you also know it from other areas now that um, let's say presenting yourself by using self-assessment uh, or assessment is needed nowadays so what what we can really see is that there's really a difference in promoting oneself or really self-assessing uh, and describing oneself again here with all the limits that words have also as a receiver to be, to be i mean objectivity is a big word but to really um respect um what people wrote and how to read it the question of, of course, confidence, honesty, and integrity of a person is, is a big challenge um, in, inside the person who writes, but also the person who reads. So it's really the, this double process. Uh, at the same time, we value very much critical reflection and self-assessment as a sign of quality. Um, yeah, and then, um, because it's, of course, when you use it, or when you are invited in application procedures where you don't know um, the person on the other side who reads it, or this person might contract you, or is also in, included in context for your future career, you always have to be aware when you use self-assessment and to what level you are also honest. Um, but from what I have seen, this is 
is is possible. It's just um, it's it's a decision that you have to take and that we have to risk also. And from our side, I can tell you, it gives information, and we see it as a sign of quality to invite people to self-assess uh, and to be also honest about their self-assessment. So the last part, recommendations for appraiser. Here we go, uh, or for where for ourselves as well. Yeah, so we have dealt with numbers in self-assessment, with descriptions, we have used these Excel files, and it's all the way for people um, to use it, but of course we need to elaborate further what is possible, yeah, what works really for people. Some people went very well with the number of using school numbers and assessing themselves. Tick boxes, I'm not a friend for it, I prefer still um, to have to find own, own words. And that needs further tools to stimulate this. You have to stimulate thinking of yourself, uh, to stimulate um, assessing yourself um, in, a, in, a good, in a good way. For me, a big question is also as recommendation, where does self-assessment start? Because uh, as you saw in what I was talking about, I talked about self-reflection, about the training process, about the process before, and you focus on self-assessment, but the question is really, where does self-assessment start? Does it start in this situation already? How do I see myself? What do I experience here? When does the, this process really start? And what do I, do I need to take into account? Which says also when developed online environments, for what do I need to be ready to collect at the beginning of an, of an online digestion way? Yeah, um, what is, um, important is to communicate um, about it, um, about self-assessment as such or assessment by others and also about competences to strengthen, uh, communicate especially in the commu community of trainers so to stimulate others to use it, to try it out for two reasons. One reason is for me to strengthen trainer self-recognition because I really think that awareness raising processes, which is for me a self-assessment process, May enable the trainer to talk about um, his or her competences, what he's able to do, helps to, to provide better quality for himself, but also in other processes. And, and that's another thing um, to, to continue with practicing it in terms of trainings um, for trainers, but also try it out yourself and combine learning process development with topics in trainings yourself. So learning by practicing at the same time. Yeah, and um, I think that's it for the time being. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen your online environment, so I cannot say anything more about the online environment. Uh, but um, yeah, that's it. I think, yeah, here we go. Thank you so much, Rita. We have in the meanwhile collected two questions and now yes. floor open also to further question. First question was from Nerius. I will unmute you shortly, Nerius, but I know you're in Armenia, so if your internet connection is not good enough, then I will simply read your question. But let's see if you, this is maybe nicer if you ask it personally. Okay, it does not seem to be working. Okay, so Nerius' question was, I need to scroll up a bit. Question, can we access feedback collected so far from using the ETS model in various contexts? No. Okay. I mean, we have, a, we have, started, uh, we have started a collection um, where the competence model was used, but by far we don't have a full overview. Um, imagine we, we expect that in Key Action 1 and Key Action 2 projects, more and more people are using it. Um, we could send you, if you are interested in, especially for contacting people, we could send you a first list that we have. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yes, it's there, but it's not public at the moment. Okay, thank you, Clear. And then Mark had two questions. Mark, I will unmute you. Okay. Hi, Mark. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. Um, my second question is actually the more important one, which was um, in your in the years of 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 using youth pass, watching people uh, use it themselves, have you noticed any cultural differences 
in the practice of self-assessment. Mm. So in terms of how open people feel that they can be with that, or do they need more training, less training, um, in terms of attitude towards it, all sorts of things like that. Should I answer this first, Mark? Yes, yes please, yes. Mm. Um, I would not answer from the cultural differences um, <laughs> context because I strongly believe it is a personality uh, question more than a um, culture, cultural, whatever culture is. Yeah? Um, it might be... Um, might have had an impact in which context you went to school or where you were formed, but I would not say that it really has differences more in personalities. I mean, I was told when started and entering the Euromed context that they are the, the connection to learning and, and individual learning context is, is more difficult because of the, of the history in the education systems, but uh, I could not see it so far. Well, I can see, but this is a personality issue. Were people invited to think about themselves, uh, to reflect about themselves, to use this self-analysis for or the self-reflection for their further development? Were people ever asked, what do you think? Of course, in contexts where people were not often asked, what do you think? How think about yourself? Um, that, that might be a challenge, but uh, I would, would I don't know if in modern societies where we have the feeling that younger younger generations are more mainstreamed, if they if they would have difficulties with this or not. I don't know. I would take it from person to person, and then or from group to group, then and then to see how can we best fit to this group and invite people to think about themselves and to talk about them, and then of course to self assess, to continue, and then stimulate the process. Thank you. Thank you. Would you also like to ask the previous question, Mark, or it's? Well, the previous question is 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 is, is just a, it's just a silly one in a way, um, in the sense of self assessment. Where does it come from in terms of youth pass and all those kinds of things? Um, did, do you think that the portfolio had an, an impact on the use of self assessment because the portfolio itself is based on that? Was the word self assessment used there? Yeah. Yeah, maybe then yes. <laughs> I don't know, but really, Mark, it was really a. Uh, uh, it can be. It can well be. Yes, of course, because we were involved in the process. It can well be. Uh -huh. uh, but it's. Um, I think it's not. Um, I mean, it's important for me, really. What what uh, I realized that it's. Um, I mean, the practice we have chosen was there before, yeah? And then the question of how to name it, especially with European English, that everybody has the the capacity to understand it, that's another thing. Because, as I said, when I saw this, I checked a bit etymological-wise where the word appraisal comes from and how it's used with assessment. Appraisal is the much more <coughs> word, a much more positive word than assessment, at least from what I found in, in for uh, discussing with this. So we ended up with a term, which is a very technical term, and it was also in the, in the business world at the time. Uh, so, yeah. I think it's more the nature of the process which is important. Mm. Following up on, on what Mark asked about cultural differences, one thing we are wondering in the team at the moment is if we should offer different types of self-assessment for different type of users. So there might be people who want the quick, easy version, there might be people who want to go very deep, and these this deep level might scare some other off who get overwhelmed by it. So did you observe any like different categories or types of users of self-assessment? I mean, I, I, for me, it goes into the, the assumption, and I mentioned it several times. It's really the question, when do people use it and for what do they need it? Somebody might have a moment where he needs to apply next week for something and he wants to use it. But this is the question, do you want to be open for purposes? So what is the, the reason for the self-assessment? And then you go this road, then I definitely would go the road, okay, of course, there might be this person who wants the easy one hour process, and then I have a description in one area. Uh, it's not the complete one, but for one competence area, or for one 
for one from one direction. But for people who are following a one year training course or a three months process or a seven months process, for them um, it might be a different process. And of course, this scares people off. But if it's clear what you are, how long the process will, will be and what elements could be there, if I can choose maybe also from the elements, of course, I would, I would also consider this seriously. But it's more connected to the purposes. Uh, of self-assessment or for the process that people would uh, need support for. Absolutely, thank you. Mm. Any other questions? We have 18 people online. Because Rita's time is, she has limited time available. So it's now your last chance, maybe. I have another question. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, also, um, in the team today, we actually had a, a, a meeting of the appraiser um, and we had the question of this, um, looking at the competence model, but I also connected it a bit to youth pass, is what happens to the things that people don't find uh, in the competence model or in the youth pass, mm -hmm. yeah? So in youth pass, you have this other um, yeah. box, yeah? Um, and then we were thinking also with the competence model, uh, what if people are super, or not a lot of people hopefully are specialized in a certain area, yeah? Mm -hmm. Um, human rights education, outdoor education, whatever. Um, so what is your experience for this? Maybe also how many people use the out, other, other box in youth pass in this sense, yeah? When this uh, possibility is open. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, the addition, two, two areas for the answer, or two directions for the answer. One is on youth pass. Um, the initial idea of the other specific competences actually came from, especially from EBS back then, also from volunteering activities where we expected young people to make very practical experience, which needs based development uh, needs to be used for. That was the initial momentum when we uh, came up with it. What we learned and what was interesting very much is that, um, for example, especially training trainers, people who wrote very long descriptions of their learning outcomes, which they didn't want to split, or for example, it was such a coherent, um, um, let's say close description, they put it in other specific competences that we had quite a lot, uh, so where people were not ready to, to really um, separate it from each other and, and put it into categories and boxes. I cannot tell you at the moment the numbers uh, on the other specific competences. If you want, I can find it out how much it's used. But at least these are two occasions. And then I expect for all others, yeah, that's, that depends on how much people are used to the key competences. Um, concerning the um, other competence areas, for example, also digital competences, uh, you are right, human rights um, competence, and now we have this entrepreneurial, this is not, at the moment, not in the um, trainer one, also not in the, in the youth worker ones, um, and uh, uh, we will find, a, but that's, at the moment, our, um, the way is that we will find a way how to connect, connect it, you saw it with the being civically engaged, which was already connected. So this is leave space for it. I would I would openly in the, in the app raiser touch this issue and leave a space for people if they really want to reflect on specific competence areas which are relevant for their work. Yeah, because they work in a let's say environmental context, then that should be provided. But. Um, I see also this other dimension that I tackled before, what is about um, the transversality of the of competences. Yeah, some, some, sometimes you train and you find out about the competence areas in the subject, this dimension. It's there, we see it, but we have no solution for this. That's future development questions. Yeah. Thank you very Not much. Not satisfying, but questions also for us. Yeah. It's something that we are because this is yeah because this is an interesting experience. Of course, if you go this road, then a lot of other possibilities and opportunities open. Yeah, it uh, creates new demands, and that's interesting to see which directions we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other contribution, remarks, questions? All right. 
then really, Rita, thank you so much. For yeah, this thank you for this opportunity. It was an interesting experience. <laughs> Whenever you need <laughs> us, we are there. <laughs> thank you so much. No, I can tell you on behalf of the Guild and Apparatus that it's really a good feeling, of course, to, to join forces with other stakeholders as we have ultimately the same interests. So it feels really yeah, 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 yeah. Consultation processes. Yeah, 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 of course. It motivates also, you know. I mean, thanks for your work, yeah, because I mean, we are only benefiting from it, or the competence model benefits from it, and the program, of course, yeah. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Yeah. Have a good afternoon. Tschüss. Servus, grüß dich. Tschüss. And now I would also like to give the floor to, to Snezhana to give us a little outlook on what are the plans in AppRaiser for the next months and how can people who are interested join what are the possibilities thanks uh, marcus um i think uh, unsurprisingly also from the questions and um and so on we are at the moment in appraiser in the phase of really hard thinking work on self-assessment um so looking into um and the things that will inform the development of this part of the of the of the whole tool um, and in this sense, there is a research ongoing and there will also be, and this is already, I think, the part of how the people can join, there will be interviews with trainers in the field to find out a little bit of, uh, of how they practice self-assessment, what are their interests, what they would like to have, would they like to have the other category in the, in the competences available and so on and so forth. Um, so this is something that will happen very soon, so please contact us if, if you're interested uh, in that. And then also the, um, the development continues in a way that there are solutions, how this uh, self-assessment will be done online um, and so on and, and so forth. Um, so basically this is, this is happening uh, at the moment. Uh, so if you're interested to join us for this uh, or if you're interested to test, because as Rita said, she personally didn't see our uh, web environment and we are happy to share it with other people. So people who are interested to test at every <coughs> stage of the development, please let us know be very happy to test it with you and hear your feedback because one thing that is quite characteristic of appraiser that most of the steps if not all that were taken were taken with the community in a way yeah not us deciding okay this is what community would need although we are part of it but actually asking people what they prefer what they would like what would be helpful and so on so i think this is a brief update of uh, where we are at the moment hopefully i didn't forget anything <laughs> thank you so much Liz. All right, then just to remind everybody that if you uh, missed some parts or want to see it again, we will post very soon the recording of this webinar together with the graphic harvesting that is done tonight and the collective notes on the blog of the Guild. And on the website of the Guild, you also find a section of AppRaiser if you want to see what the project is about. And of course, you can follow us on, on Facebook in the International Youth Work Trainers Group or the Guild community page, where we also put the upcoming opportunities. So thanks to everybody. Thank you to Mika and Jan for taking notes. Thank you to Snej for giving the outlook. Thank you for everybody who participated and had interest. And we will inform you about the next webinar, what will be the topic and when will it be. So thanks for everybody and have a nice day still. Ciao.